Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over four worked examples to show you how to do problems involving capacitance, charge, and potential difference. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my three videos for capacitance and charge and potential difference across a capacitor, as well as energy stored by a capacitor, and that way watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. Question 1A says that a 600 microfarad capacitor has a potential difference of 15 volts across it. Calculate the charge stored in the capacitor. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the charge Q. We know capacitance C is 600 microfarads, which we can rewrite as 600 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and our potential difference V is 15 volts. So writing down our equation, we have C equals Q over V. Rearranging for charge Q, we can multiply these two together to get Q equals CV. Substituting in the numbers gives us 600 times 10 to the minus 6 times 15, and putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 9 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. Part B says that if a steady current flows at 0.5 amps, how long would the capacitor take to charge? Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the time t. We know the charge Q from part A is 9 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs, and our current I is 0.5 amps from the question here. So writing down our equation relating charge, current, and time, we have Q equals IT. Rearranging for time t gives t equals q over i. Substituting in the numbers gives us 9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0 0.5 and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. Question 2a says that a capacitor stores 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs when the potential difference across it reaches 500 volts. Calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the capacitance c. We know that the charge Q is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs, and the potential difference V is 500 volts. So writing down our equation, we don't need to rearrange it this time, just plug in the numbers to get 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 over 500. Putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 farads. Part B then says that if the capacitor takes 0.1 seconds to charge, what is the current in the circuit? Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the current I, we know the charge Q is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs, and the time T is 0.1 seconds. So writing down our equation relating charge, current, and time, we have Q equals IT. Rearranging for I, we divide both sides by T to get I equals Q over T. Substituting in the numbers gives us 1.25 times 10 to the minus 2 divided by 0.1, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 0.13 amps. Question 3a says that a capacitor has a capacitance of 220 microfarads and stores 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs when fully charged. What is the voltage across it when fully charged? Well, writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the voltage V. We know the capacitance C is 220 microfarads, which we can rewrite as 220 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and the charge Q is 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs. Writing down our equation, we have C equals Q over V. Rearranging for V this time, we can just swap the C and V terms, so we get V equals Q over C. And substituting in the numbers gives 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 220 times 10 to the minus 6. Putting that into your calculator should give you a final answer of 6 volts. Part B then says, what is meant by a capacitance of 220 microfarads? Well, here you're being asked to state the definition of capacitance, but you also need to use this value of 220 microfarads in your answer. So you would say that a capacitance of 220 microfarads is the same as saying a charge of 220 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs is stored in the capacitor for each volt across it. So here we've referred to our definition of capacitance as being the charge stored per volt, and we've included this value of 220 microfarads in the form of coulombs for the charge, and we've written that out in full form without the prefix. Lastly, on to question 4, part A says that as the potential difference across a capacitor increases, what happens to the charge stored by the capacitor? Well, remember the charge stored by a capacitor and potential difference across the capacitor have a directly proportional relationship. So as one increases, the other one must increase as well. So we can say that it increases. Part B says to sketch a graph of charge versus potential difference to show this relationship. Numerical values are not required on the axes. Well, our graph should look something like this, where we've got charge on the y-axis against potential difference on the x-axis, and we've got a straight line going through the origin. Part C then says what is given by the area under the graph on your sketch. Well, this actually comes from the theory video on energy stored by a capacitor, but we saw the area under the graph gives us the energy stored in the capacitor. And the proof of this that we saw in the theory video is that the area under the graph here is equal to a half times the base times the height, 
And in this case, it's equal to a half times v times q because v is our base on the x-axis and q is our height on the y-axis. So if we rearrange this slightly to get a half times qv, then we can compare this to our energy formula, which is E equals a half QV. And we can see the energy is therefore equal to the area under the graph. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.